Hello and welcome to Disc Review, the podcast that goes track by track through a different album each week. And we're your hosts, Max and Matt. Join us as we explore some of our favorite records. No, I'm a fan, I swear, I swear. I, I feel like I've become a music normie. I'm tired of being Mr. Positive Guy. Dude, it's, that's not you. This is certifiably the most boring album I've ever heard. Uh, and there's a reason they don't do it, because it's terrible. We hope you enjoy the show. Let's get into it. All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Disc Review. We are so glad to be back. We had some technical issues. We hope we fixed them. Um, so here's crossing our fingers. We won't know till <laughs> after we record, I guess. Um, but uh, Matt, why don't you introduce the album that we're going to be talking about today? Well, we're following up on our songs about Jane Maroon Five with their second album. It won't be it won't be soon before long. Kind of a confusing name to say. I think that's on purpose. Uh huh. It's also got a stylized period at the end. I didn't know that. Oh, I, I didn't realize that either. It is a kind of a confusing name. Um, but to be honest, like I, I was going through this and I, I think this album really holds up. Like I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, we'll I'll talk more about that once we get into track by track. But I just felt like I hadn't really heard these songs the way they were meant to be heard until now. Yeah, I mean, I kind of was of the opinion or at least thought this was common opinion that the second album was kind of the weakest and kind of a lull in the band. But I was also shocked how much I liked it and also how much it feels like that first album. I kind of, I thought Mm -hmm. they were really separate and I felt like that first album was on its own with its own style, but I feel like this is a natural evolution. I mean, they took a turn a little bit, but it's, it continues that style of a lot of their songs that you could kind of link to and see how they got to this album. I think that this album's better than I thought it would be, and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, well, let's talk about this album art here. I I think this album artwork really reminds me of the very first, the 1975 album cover. Yeah. Um, But this this one came before that, so I don't know. Maybe the 1975 took (laughs) a little inspiration there, but um, I, I do think it's a little more boring than the Songs About Jane album cover, but it's fine. Yeah, I mean, the room itself is kind of cool. It's got this, like, concrete-looking room with, you know, all the bandmates kind of in a freeze frame. I think it's I think it's all right. I like um, the... They got the soon has the overlapping O's. I mean, they're just doing a whole bunch of things on this. All right, well, let's jump into it. Let's talk about this track by track. Jumping into the track by track. So the first song is If I Never See Your Face Again. Uh, I had never heard these songs except for when I would hear them on the radio. So the first thing I noticed was how amazing the mixes sound on streaming. It's so much better than the radio versions. So, like if you're the kind of person who only really listens to the radio, you should hop on a streaming service and listen to your favorite artist because you'll be blown away by how good and clear the songs are. Yeah, I used to listen to the radio a lot when you had to buy your songs for a buck twenty nine a piece. So I just hop on the radio on my iPod and just listen there because who, <laughs> that's the only way to get new and current music. But yeah, the streaming, I mean, we definitely be taking it for granted because streaming sounds so good. And you're right, this album does sound really good. This is from 2007. I They took a pretty long gap um, between that first album and this, probably because they were out touring and experiencing all this newfound fame here. Five-year gap, so... So it's definitely kind of a long-awaited sequel, and it starts off with If I Never See Your Face Again, which is a song. Um, Was it big on the radio? I don't really remember this one on the radio as much. I mean, I've heard it, and I've never sought out this song, so I yeah. assumed that either my mom played it in the car while I was little yeah, I or, it was or it was on the radio. Probably pretty decent popularity. Not their biggest song, but... Yeah, this one's pretty catchy and a great way to start out the album, in my opinion. I think that... It really just establishes that that tone and that style, I think, going forward. This album does remind me a lot of that first album, but I think it's a, a little more, I don't know, melancholy sounding. Do you get that? Yeah, at times, for sure. Um, I You bringing up having to buy a song for a buck 29, bro, it makes me think, like, you and I are not that old. We are in our almost mid-20s, uh, but it feels like, uh, kids just a few years younger than us don't know what it's like to have to go to Walmart and buy a whole album for like 12 bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's changed a lot. It, I was definitely in on that like iTunes 
you know, buying music off there. And I don't know, it's it's kind of amazing, you know, the opportunities you have to listen to music now compared to that, because that was, that was brutal. It was rough. Well, the second track is Makes Me Wonder. The instruments are so well mixed on this album. Every instrument sounds so good. The bass on this one is particularly great. It's got a good buzz to it, and it's loud, but it doesn't overpower any of the other instruments, which I I think can be pretty hard to do um, on the production side. Um, When I think of Maroon 5, I usually think of their first album. You know, it's iconic. Every song is so popular. But this album, uh, to me, just sounds miles ahead as far as production. And um, I think the songwriting is just as good. No, you're 100% right. The production is way better on this. You can tell the upgraded... Uh, budget. I don't really know, you know, who they worked with on this one, but it definitely sounds like, I mean, that first album sounds like it could be from the 90s. It's so old sounding, but this sounds mm-hmm. really modern and fresh even now. I, I can't tell that it's old at all. But this album, or this song in particular, makes me wonder was, I believe, a pretty decently big single. It's a song I definitely remember. And probably my favorite of the singles, I really like the energy. It reminds me a lot of This Love, kind of yeah. uh, got the same guitar style and uh, lyrical content. Uh, but whatever I think of this song, I think of uh, loving this song when I was like a, like a little kid, like eight or something. I don't even know. And I thought that the lyric was, uh, I never gave a thought about you. And I was horrified when I figured out what the actual lyric was. <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and to me that was always oh funny. man well the on the radio they might have i think it was on the radio that it for thought and then i like i guess i didn't i guess i got a different version i don't know i'll, I'll look it up if that was on the clean version the the album i want to do next week um has some really funny funny radio edits okay. that we'll have to talk about i just think radio edits are They're so funny. funny um the next song is little of your time I think the guitar really steals the show on this song. It's really fun, punchy melody. Uh, it kind of takes control of the song. Of course, the other best part is Adam's voice. I I mean, I think it's pretty agreed upon that Adam Levine has one of the best pop voices out there. It, he's got such a unique sound to him, and Rune 5 would not be what it is without him. Yeah, I agree. I think this is kind of an underrated song on the album, pretty low stream count, but I think it's super catchy and fun. It sounds a little grungy to me. I got a little bit of vocal effects yeah. on there distorting that voice and I don't know I think it's I, I get why they put it up higher on the list but it seems like not a fan favorite then we have wake up call probably one of the weirdest songs on the record uh, this song has a fun premise about catching your lover in bed with someone else it takes a dark turn when he shoots the guy <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> The only part I don't really like that much is the bridge where he kind of regrets shooting the man. Like, I, I'm absolutely opposed to violence, but, it you know, it's just a song. Like, commit to the homicide, brother. Art is one of the only places we can have fun with murder, so don't feel too bad about it. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I don't relate to the premise at all, but it's like you just kind of get lost in the story and, you know, yeah, you can kind of just vibe out a story about this dude. Just That's funny that... He does that in the bridge because um, a very, you know, line that occurs a lot in the song is I don't feel so bad. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No, he says, I don't feel so bad. And then in the bridge, he's like, oh, maybe his heart's still breathing. Like, maybe we can still save him. But yeah, it is kind of back and forth with that. Then we have Won't Go Home Without You. This song feels like the she will be loved of this That's album. That's what I said. Yeah, dude. It slows it down and brings in the emotion that the past few songs kind of swapped out for energy and fun. The, the instruments are a little more boring on this track, but that's kind of to be expected with a slower song with a little less going on. Yeah, I mean, this is the most popular song off this record. I think it definitely is channeling that same She Will Be Loved energy. It's very uh, melancholy and still really guitar-driven. But I think it's a great one to throw on when you're sad and lonely. That's what I always did and why I like this song a lot. Oh, and for I, sure. I think that's why it's so popular. It just It just does that very well. Then we have Nothing Lasts Forever. This song has a sort of vulnerability to it that makes the song feel more sincere. It's not the most exciting song, but you can really get lost in it and just vibe out. It's got a good heartbreak element to it uh, as it talks about a kind of impossible love that will inevitably end. Uh, Not my favorite song on the record, but it's solid. 
Yeah, I feel like this is when you start entering the deep cut section of this album. It's 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 kind of a unique section of Maroon 5's discography right here. It's I was kind of surprised going through this album and the last one, like how vibey some of the songs are, and you can just kind of get lost in them, and and that's kind of their style on purpose. And I think this one's definitely the case. And it makes me think of how different Maroon 5 is now. They don't do this kind of stuff anymore. You know, they're entirely pop driven. Big, big singles and, you know, forget about the deep cuts. But I feel like even here on the second album, they really did care about the entire album. And, you know, they definitely did do big pop singles, but these deep cuts are just kind of more artistic than I would have expected, you know? Yeah. The next song is Can't Stop. Here we're brought back to the kind of energy the album started off with. Unfortunately, I think this song might have the worst chorus on the album. The the verses are pretty catchy and cool but the chorus is just really underwhelming which is shocking because maroon 5 usually specializes in good choruses it just sticks out as being especially bad compared to the other choruses on the record this wasn't my least favorite chorus i think it's fine it's not as standout maybe but i think what steals a show about this song for me is just that like chaotic rock energy and i like how that style of the song links to the lyrical content, talking about just getting lost in your infatuation. I think it it works what they're trying to do, I think. Then we have Good Night, Good Night. The first few guitar notes of this song sound so much like the song Kryptonite. It kind of took me back to being 13. Uh, but unlike Kryptonite, this song goes very sweet and very honest. This is definitely a deep cut, but a really powerful deep cut, in my opinion, for people who can relate to the message. Yeah, I think this chorus is next level. This is one of their best on the record. It's just, you can definitely get lost in the emotion behind that chorus. I think is what keeps people coming back to a song like this. Now we have Not Falling Apart. This song starts off with a steady kick and bass that makes you just want to bob your head to the beat, but kind of transitions into a full-on dance song in the chorus. I, I can kind of see it being played at like an early 2010 school dance. It's got a good message about not letting bad situations or relationships make you fall apart. So I liked this one. I was kind of surprised by how many of these songs on the back section of this album are just really kind of sad, melancholy, kind of contemplative. Like, it, it was kind of interesting. And I agree. I think this one does transition. You get a ton of energy towards the end, but still car- yeah, carries that sad energy that's really present on these songs. Now we have Kiwi. Uh, something about this song just didn't really do it for me. The verses are not very catchy, and the chorus is a little underwhelming. It kind of sounds like a knockoff of Watermelon Sugar. That is def- No, Watermelon Sugar is knockoff of this, bro. How can you say that? <laughs> well- this is from 2007. <laughs> Maybe he did it better. He probably did it better, but come on. No, you're right. You're right. Um, I don't know. I'm just not really into songs relating women to fruit. I don't (laughs) know. It doesn't stand out to me that much, but um, Adam Levine is a horny boy. Well, people on the internet, that's been on well, good display here on Twitter a couple months ago. And listen, the signs have all been here. You didn't listen to Kiwi. All right. Just because it has the least streams on the album. It shows, bro. Yeah, we should have listened to Kiwi. Real Maroon 5 fans have been paying attention, okay? Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't <laughs> dislike the song. I think it's really unique sounding. It's really uh it's really different. I think that's why it's so low streamed. They uh I was just reading up on some little background that they had about it. One of the band members said that they wanted this album to be uh more up tempo than the last album. I don't really agree. I feel like this is a little more slower I, most of the time. Certainly not in this song, but they also listed, I think, Prince as one of the inspirations, and that, that it kind of sounds like that, this song right here. Very funky. I just think that they do some fun things on this song that kind of elevate it. I agree the verses are probably the weakest part, but around the halfway mark, it gets there's so much energy, and there's these horns. He does this cool vocal effect and goes straight into a guitar solo. I feel like if that's what you're looking for, uh, that's a lot of fun on this song. Yeah, I think the direction they took this album is definitely a fun ride. And I don't think the melancholy stuff is bad. Like, I really like that stuff. So if uh, I could see if your main audience is just looking for big pop songs, uh, going a little darker with themes and and, uh, instrumentation might put some people off. But I think it was the right move. Then we have Better That We Break. 
Here we got another slow song. I think the first one to use piano as the main instrument, right? Um, it gets even more fun when the drums kick in uh, after the first verse. The song has a really good message about being honest, uh, about how you feel. He talks about how he's hurting and the relationship just isn't working for him. And it's best that they just both end it, which I think is a, a mature outlook on relationships. Yeah, I think this is another sad song you can just get lost in. That's what it is for me. I think it paints a really good story. And like you said, I'm I'm a big fan of a lot of the messages on this album. And I think it's one of Adam's most personal records. And I think it's a, a lot of fun if you're a Maroon 5 fan. Songs like this, these deep cuts are really good. And to close it out, we have Back at Your Door. I really like the combination of piano and guitar in this song. They just work really well together to create a good atmosphere. And I'm really glad that they had a good chorus to end the album with. The chorus is really good on this one. It closes things out really nicely and gets you excited for the next Maroon 5 album. Yeah, I actually picked this as my favorite song going back here. I just, I think the strings, the drums, and I feel like Levine really pours out his like heart and soul on his vocal performance here. He just steals the show. And I think that it's just a great example of what Maroon 5 is really good at. And I just love getting lost in this one, especially. Well, tell me what you think about this album. I'm pleasantly surprised. I really like this album. I used to think it was probably one of the weakest, but I don't don't know if that's true anymore. This is a really good follow-up to that really strong style they started with on their first album. And I think it's a really great follow-up. Yeah, I also agree that I, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I mean, I I like the first album, but I'm not a huge Maroon 5 fan. Like, I don't listen to them that much. Um, so a lot of this was kind of new for me, and I enjoyed the ride. I thought it was pretty fun, great sound production. So, yeah, I look forward to the next time we review a Maroon 5 song. Well, guys, we wanted to end this episode of Disc Review um, by talking about uh, a song that we made years ago, um, and it's apropos because it's a Christmas song, and I thought it would be fun for us both to just go and listen to it right now and give like our um, our blind uh, feedback on what we think. Like, does it still hold up? Is it a good song? I know it's not a great song because it we made it in like a day, but it'll it'll be fun to listen back through it and. If you guys, you know, if we decide that we don't hate it that much and we get some comments asking for it, maybe we'll release it later. Just talking. Just talking. Matt, do you want to, we can pull it up and both listen to it right now? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready as well. All right. Instrumental is actually kind of fire. <laughs> it's very jazzy. Yeah. And like, kind of goofy. Well, it's a comedy song. For everyone listening, the premise is... Uh, it's two guys trying to get home for Christmas, uh, but they just, you know, booked their flights too late. They can't figure out how to get there, and they're scrambling trying to get home. I think the chorus is actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's repetitive, but I think it's got a solid hook. Okay, the second verse is, is my favorite part of my section. I do love the second verse. I think the ending is the best part, but... I forget. Yeah, your part is really good here, and then I, I like my... Yeah part of the verse as well surprised by our flow I, what i love most about this song is i'm just not this character at all like i was playing this character who's sloppy and late and <laughs> yeah. like just kind of goofy i went kind of sexy with the second half of my verse yeah, seriously <laughs> i like how we add a little something different every time we do the chorus yeah this one's got us both really i don't know if i vibe with the talking in the bridge anymore our production is actually not bad yeah, I mean, I think if we were to do it now, it would be a lot it better. Would, but, but like the vocals are a little a little quiet, but I I think the effects on them are good. Like they don't sound bad. <laughs> I forgot about the mugging part. <laughs> I like your talking section better than mine. I no, I love my favorite part is when we're like, "Yo, I am so bored. How long is this bus ride?" <laughs> and the drum fill part is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, that that is funny. Yeah, that was, that was fun going through it. That was better than I remembered it, to be honest. Um, all right. Well, thank you for listening to this week's episode of Disc Review. Um, we're grateful uh, to have as many of you as we do. We just hit 150 subscribers on YouTube, and Spotify has been, been doing better. So we, we thank you for that, and we hope to you know have you guys keep coming by and listening to our reviews. Thank you.